Welcome to the Click Podcast. I'm Danny Watson, a mindset and manifestation expert and founder of The Click, a company that helps women overcome their fears and limiting beliefs to create a life and business that they love. Within this podcast, I will help you get clear on what you want, identify the blocks that are holding you back, transform your mindset and raise your vibration so that you can co-create magic with the universe. If you are looking to design a life that truly sets your soul on fire and manifests more success and abundance, then you are in the right place. Hello ladies and welcome to this week's episode where I am going to be following on from last week and I'm going to be talking you through the things that really supported me in manifesting my dream home. So if you've not checked out last week's episode, I would strongly recommend that you start there. And then for this week, what I'm going to be doing is going to be walking you through how I started to embody the energy of somebody that was already living in my dream home and for what for me specifically that really looked and felt like because energy work I think it's one of those things that um, people are often really intrigued about when it comes to the manifestation process but don't fully understand how to embody the vibration of somebody who has already created that reality And now last week we spoke a lot about belief work. And I think the thing with beliefs, it it sometimes feels, I don't don't want to say simpler or easier because belief work certainly isn't easy, but because you've almost got something tangible, because you can kind of see or identify and put into words a belief, like I believe I'm not worthy, or I believe making money is hard, or I don't believe I'll ever be able to own a, you know, million pound home or whatever. You know, you can actually write down a specific belief. But energy work, it's more of a feeling, right? And it's, it's something that it's, it's harder to describe or at least, you know, put down into one sentence. So what I want to do today is really sort of walk you through what I kind of felt really helped me embody the energy of the, that higher version of me. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit as well about surrendering to the universe. And I've got a really, really exciting story to share with you in relation to this, which I know a lot of you are going to love. It gave me goosebumps. And I love sharing this story with people because it just, yeah, it really just gets people excited. Um, But let's talk about energy first then. So we all know, or at least if you've been listening to this podcast for some time, the importance of your energy when it comes to attracting things into your life. We have to remember that we're not here to just do in order to get to where we want to to be. We are meant to be, and in that being, we attract and call in the things that we desire. And so this is often a misconception with people that perhaps aren't aware of the law of attraction. They often get caught up in the doing. They assume that the responsibility to get, you know, the dream home or the business or the career success or the relationship, they have to be doing lots of things. And actually, we can do a lot less just by changing who we're being. Because once we start to be the person who already has all of those things, those things will naturally start attracting themselves into our lives. So, you know, if you want to attract or manifest that dream home, you have to start embodying the energy of that version of you that already is in it. Okay. Now, this is where, for me, I found this part really, really fun and really, really exciting. But some people do find it a little bit more challenging because they're so fixed on what is in front of them. Okay. So their reality is based upon what they physically see around them. So let's say, for example, we're talking about the dream home. At the time when I started this process for manifesting a dream home overseas, I, this is just like a glimmer of a dream at the beginning stages. And I myself was at a point where I was in a flat that definitely did not resemble a dream home. Okay. I would look around me. It was very small. It, you know, it wasn't, particularly glamorous. Um, We even, you know, had mice at one point. I lived on a sofa bed for four years, you know, so it definitely did not reflect the home that I ultimately saw myself in. But because of that, if I was to just spend all my time looking and complaining, oh, I hate living here. Like, look at these 
crappy walls, like, you know, these horrible floors. If I was to focus all the time and all my energy onto, you know, my, my current reality, that would be me embodying the energy of where I was right then, not the energy of where I wanted to be. And so I got very, very good at really just cutting myself off from the things that I didn't want to see and becoming a product of my inner world rather than living too much in my outer world. And so what I mean by this is obviously I would see my apartment, I would see where I was waking up every day, but it was almost like as soon as I started to see what I didn't want, I started to take myself inside and started to focus on the things that I did want to see. And this is something, it might feel weird to begin with, but it's something you should have a play around with. Because the more that you can get used to living in your imagination, if your imagination is preferable right now, the easier it becomes and the more fun it becomes. And the more you start to feel that that imagination is so familiar, you are already living it. And this is the whole point with energy work. It's getting yourself to this place where it's that familiarity with your dreams rather than you feeling so distant from your dreams, which often happens, you know, when you have a big dream such as, you know, a, an incredible home or, you know, let's say you're, you know, you're so, your dreams are so far removed from where you are now. Often when people think of their dreams, they think about it from that place of a hope or a wish. But the idea is, is that by embodying yourself into that dream on a daily basis, you're starting to get really familiar with your dreams. Your dreams all of a sudden don't feel so out of reach or out of touch because you are living them daily. They have become your new normal. You living in a dream home is just something that you expect. That's your reality because you're seeing it every single day. Okay, so we spoke about visualization in last week's episode, seeing with crystal clear clarity your reality. And kind of visualization can weave into this energy process, but visualizing it, not just from a place of physically seeing something, but a place of feeling it. Feeling like I'm already in that space, that space of my dream home. So I would go into the details of this as much as I could, thinking more about how I would feel. Let's say if I woke up in the morning and rather than looking at, you know, the concrete wall of my next door neighbor's flat, I was waking up and I was looking out of my bedroom terrace, onto my bedroom terrace, I could see the sea in the distance. And actually what's really funny is that I'm literally saying this to you right now and I am actually sat on my bed recording this. The moment it's place it things are everywhere in our house at the moment because we've only just moved in and actually the bedroom is probably one of the best places to record um so I'm sat on my bed at the moment recording this I've got a beautiful big terrace with a table and chairs and a sun lounger out on it and I can see the sea and again this feeling that I've got now of this is my life this is my home this is my reality this isn't the first time I felt this I may have only just moved in here a couple of weeks ago, but I felt this feeling so many times. It's like it's kind of been my life for for a long while, okay? And what was really interesting, actually, is that obviously I was super excited to move in here. And I was, yeah, I was obviously, this is amazing and beyond happy. But at the same time, it wasn't that excitement surprised excitement. It wasn't like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. I fully believed. And, you know, again, like it felt like it was almost like, oh, well, about time to, (laughs) you know, I've been expecting this to happen. You know, here you are, dream home. You know, I finally, I'm welcoming you into my physical world, you know, but at the same time, you know, I already kind of felt like I'd been there. So again, when you wake up in the morning, how can you start to see what you want to see through using your imagination and start to feel what that would actually feel like? And it's sometimes helpful if you've kind of put yourself in experiences where you can almost get a taster for your reality. So for example, I've done, you know, before kind of moving into this dream home, I've done a lot of traveling over the past few years. And traveling for me has been one of those things that I just love traveling. Like I love 
going somewhere new. I love exploring. And I find that being in a different environment really sparks my creativity. So for me, it's not just taking time out. Traveling for me is actually almost like a business decision because I know that through going away, I show up better for my for my business, for my clients, I can create better, I get new ideas, I just get fresh new insights. Some of my biggest business ideas have been born from trips that I've taken. But what traveling also does, it allows me to immerse myself in environments similar to that in which I want to live. So I've always kind of said, like, I want this home to be somewhere warm, somewhere overseas. So let's say I go somewhere and I, you know, I stay in a hotel room and that hotel is looking out onto the sea and it's got a beautiful balcony. Rather than waking up that morning and saying, you know, I'm in a hotel room, how can I start to tell myself the narrative of this is my bedroom? This is where I'm waking up. I'm looking out. That's not you know, the the hotel pool I can see, that's my own pool that I can see down below in the garden. How would that feel? And starting to play around with those emotions. So it's almost kind of like test driving your dream life. I did this ex- this same um, experiment, actually, well, experiment, I did the same thing, actually, when it came to purchasing the first sort of nice car that I owned. (laughs) Um, I don't like a, well, I didn't even own it. I got it handed down from my younger sister, (laughs) a little Fiat Punto, uh, which was very, very old, but did the job when I was living in London. Um, But the first sort of nice, nice nice-ish car (laughs) that I owned, um, I had drove that car previously. I had test driven that car. So I'd literally test drove the my dreams, basically. And as I was doing the test drives, it was a um, black discovery. Um, That was kind of my um, car that I always really wanted for some reason. (laughs) And um, yeah, so I wanted this car. And I, before I was in a position where it had physically manifested, I thought, okay, I want to start getting into the energy of, I already own this car and really understanding what that would feel like. And so I would actually go to the garage before I was ready to purchase it and I would test drive the car. And as I was driving it, I would imagine that this is my car. This is my new normal. This is my reality. You know, I would really get a feeling for the leather seats, the, you know, the wheel, the, the smell of that, you know, the new car smell, you know, the being able to drive in automatic and, you know, all of the things that I just kind of liked about this car. And I would really start to feel into it. And like, this is already mine. I would imagine like where I would be driving to if this was my car. So again, like by the time I actually did buy the car, I had already embodied the energy of somebody who owned it. I'd been there, I'd done it. You know, I'd felt that energy. It felt like normal to me. It felt familiar to me. And this is what we're looking for, this familiarity with your dreams, not having your dreams so out of reach that they feel like a pipe dream. So there's ways that you can do this. Let's say, for example, your dream home, you know, start to, let's say next time you're walking up to your front door, rather than seeing what's in front of you as you walk up, what do you want to visualize there? What do you want to feel when you imagine you know, seeing that huge, beautiful home in the countryside or wherever, wherever it is, as you walk up to that door, as you turn the handle, as you step through your front door, think about what sounds do you want to hear? What smells do you want to hear? You know, so for me, I've, you know, gone into this level of detail, you know, as I walk through my door and I even, you know, remember thinking, oh, I'd love to have like jasmine, like as I sort of get to my front door, you know, I'd love to have like a jasmine bush. Now, if any of you have like smelt jasmine, like it smells, oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> and, you know, if you have like a big tree of it, like by your front door, imagine that, imagine walking up to your front door and instantly you get this big waft of jasmine smell. You know, that was the level of detail I was going into. You know, and thinking about, you know, the, the flooring as you walk into your, your home, like, what's that, that, that feeling you get from walking through on your floors? Like, go into as much detail as possible and not just seeing it, but really feeling it as well. And again, this is where it helps to kind of go and experience, you know, maybe it's going and test driving a dream car or maybe it's um, planning out a, a holiday or a trip that you want to take, you know, as if, you're, you're about to book it or, you know, going and 
going and looking at houses. You know, for houses, it's a great one because you can just go into an estate agent. It could be a dream home that you see online. I'm sure loads of you do this. I can't be the only one that looks through Rightmove or Zoopla. I like to call it property porn. (laughs) My partner and I do it all the time. We still do it now. Like, you know, like love to look at properties that aren't within our physical reality right now, but we absolutely love looking at you know, rather than just scrolling through pictures on the internet, how about calling up the estate agent and saying that you are looking for a property and you are doing your property search and you've seen this house online, you would like to organize a viewing. Okay. Um, you can tell them you've got your mortgage already sorted. (laughs) They don't need to know. And you get to then go and go around this house and view it as if you are purchasing it. Um, I've definitely done this a few times. I did it before I'd even owned any property at all. Um, And I used to actually love, me and my mum would often do it. We'd go and look around show homes, like, you know, new housing estates where it was already like decorated and um, everything was all sort of pristine. And I'd go around and look around those with my mum and we just, you know, just would enjoy going and looking around them. And at the time I just thought, oh, I'm just having fun. But actually now I realise the power of doing things like that and actually what they can do to your energy and how charged you get when you've lived or you've got to have a, you've been able to have a taste of what you want. You know, you've been able to road test it, what that can actually do to your energy. Okay. So definitely give that a go. Now, whilst we are talking about energy, um, I feel like I can't leave out the power of your words, the energy that your words have. When you speak something into the world, you know, whether you're chatting with a friend or even actually just thinking thoughts, they, those thoughts and those words are energy. So think about every word that you say is building up your energy in a certain direction, okay? And so let's say you're talking about wanting to manifest your dream home, yet you are spending your time and your energy talking about how miserable you are or how crummy your current home is. You are creating energy that focuses on that that crumminess and what you don't want, okay? You're giving your energy to talking or complaining about something that you don't want, Every time you complain about what you don't like or what you don't want or what's going wrong for you, you are giving more energy to that. And like attracts like. If you give your energy to something you don't want, you are simply attracting more of what you don't want. So just be really, really mindful of how you are talking about your current reality, what you are giving your attention to, what you focus on expands. So... Sometimes it can feel like, you know, the best thing to do is to vent and to complain. You know, it could have been so easy for me to just complain about, oh, I hate living in this flat. I hate the fact that I have all of these flatmates and just kind of really dwell and focus on that. You know, or I could have complained when all of my friends around me were buying properties and getting on the property ladder and I was in the process of quitting my job and starting from ground zero. And I could have complained about that. I could have complained that, oh, well, you know, I'm doing this, starting this business, but it means that I'm not going to be able to get on the property ladder now for years. And it's unfair. And, oh, it's so annoying that everybody else, you know, is buying a house and I'm still renting. I could have complained about that. But that would have been giving my energy to what I didn't want to create more of. So just be really, really mindful of, you know, what you're talking about, what you're what you're venting about. Sometimes we think if we complain about things, we keep our problems close to us. And so, you know, it it kind of makes us almost feel like, oh, well, I I kind of know what's going on in my life if I talk about my problems because they're there and keeping my my issues close to me. Whereas actually we want to, uh, Abraham Hicks Hicks actually uses the phrase, you know, bury your head in the sand. (laughs) Like, why do we need to talk about what's going wrong? Like often people talk about the things that they don't want, not from a place of trying to fix them, but just from a place of, um, you know, just wanting to complain (laughs) and, you know, feeling good about having that vent. You know, maybe you've done this before when you say, oh, you know, I just needed to have a good vent. And actually the problem doesn't necessarily go away. It's still there. And in fact, you've added fuel to the fire. 
Okay, so yeah, that was just sort of another final point on energy. But the next thing I want to talk about, I would normally hear talk about taking inspired action to manifesting my dream home. But I feel like I've probably spoke a lot about this during the podcast about for me, my inspired action has really been finally doing work that I actually love. (laughs) I'm, you know, working as a coach, coaching clients, growing my coaching business, then going on to create my coach training academy and training other women to become coaches. Like that for me, like it's work that I would do, things that I would do, even if I wasn't getting paid for it. Like I absolutely love doing it. For me, that is really where I am fully in alignment when I am, you know, doing things that I am passionate about. And I feel like that's the thing that's got me to where I am. You know, I feel that just because I've been so true to doing the things that really light me up and sort of trying to stay away from the things that drain me or just don't feel good, I feel like that's really, really supported me in getting to my my desired goal. But I really want to talk about surrendering to the universe because Obviously, when you think about manifesting, your role is to get clear on what you want, to work on your beliefs, to start working on your energy. Like those are the things that you have to kind of be responsible for. But you also have to expect that the universe is going to show up and it's going to send you people, events, opportunities, experiences that support you in your dreams. And you have to trust that it is going to always be working in your highest interests, okay? And often when we try and control too much the outcome, or we kind of try and force things, often we're going against our best interests. So I fully believe that if we are allowing the universe to guide us, things should be easy, they should flow, you know, it should feel like this really natural process. I'm not going to say there won't be challenges along the way because there will be. His challenges are often in your best interests because they're ways to help you grow. But if things sometimes feel like a constant uphill battle, sometimes we do need to step back and think, okay, am I trying to force things here? Am I trying to push things? Should I just la- allow the universe to guide me a little bit and just see what plays out here? So the story I want to share, I've got a couple of stories in relation to this. The first is that, so my home that I've bought, so it's in Marbella, which is the southern part of Spain where it's honestly, it's pretty much sunny every single day of the year. But this was not my original plan. My original plan, I had it in my head that I was going to live on an island. First, I thought it was going to be Ibiza. And then I realized that it was a little bit too seasonal for me. And so I started to explore Mallorca as an option. And I dragged all of my family, (laughs) my partner, I was like convinced him, I was like, Mallorca's where we're going to be. I dragged them there and we spent quite a lot of time there, um, living out of hotels mainly. And with two children, (laughs) travel isn't the easiest. Um, Atticus was still really small at this point. He was like six months old. Um, Rafi was, you know, she was like two and a half. Um, So, you know, they're sort of ages where it can be pretty challenging, the whole sort of traveling and just being out of their home environment, not having their sort of normal home routine. You know, Atticus didn't have his normal bed that he would sleep in. Rafi is just, she's in our bed anyway, but just, you know, just being in a different environment. Um, But anyway, I was adamant that this was, you know, this was going to be where we were going to live. And I definitely tried to do too much during this first trip to Mallorca because I literally had us back to back with viewings of different um, different houses we were going to see. We actually got off the plane, our flight into Mallorca when we first got there, I think it was in June last year. We landed at five o'clock and we were viewing a house at like 7 p.m. I don't know what I was thinking with a, you know, a six month old and a two and a half year old. It was an absolute nightmare. Rafi was chasing around this dog, trying to jump in the pool. Atticus was having a full on meltdown. <laughs> we didn't like the house. <laughs> we were all exhausted. It was just, yeah, it was just a disaster. And I found like actually a lesson from that trip was that I tried to control things way too much in that I tried to fit too much into the schedule. I was very, too much in my masculine for that trip. And we got to the end of the trip and we'd actually put in an offer. We actually found a house that we 
we both liked. We really, really liked the house. Um, it was a thinker, so it was sort of a country house, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, it had huge amounts of land. It was very quiet. And, okay, we were like, this is the one. We put an offer in. But we came back from that trip, honestly, like... Even though we'd put an offer in for this house and it had been accepted, we flew back to the UK and we almost kind of felt a bit deflated. And we were like, why do we feel like this? Because, you know, we've just put this offer in, like this is the next chapter of our lives. This should be really exciting, but we both just feel exhausted. And we kind of just blamed it on the fact that it was a really sort of full on hectic trip. Um, And um, I think we were there for just under, I think it was like three weeks in total. Um, But anyway, so we put this offer in for this house and just everything that could have possibly gone wrong started to go wrong. And it turned out (laughs) that the owner of this house had hadn't told us that whilst we had the offer accepted, they continued to show the house around. And We, being buyers from the UK, we had to have something, um, since Brexit, we had to have something called a military permit to buy a finca. So to buy a country property, you had to have a military permit. And they'd had an offer from another buyer, another potential buyer that didn't, that was Spanish or or, or already had Spanish residency, so didn't need this permit. So they decided to, without us knowing let the other people see the property. We'd already had our offer accepted. They'd let the other people see the property and they said, well, this is what the offer is on the table. If you can match it, it's yours because you, we wouldn't need to wait for this military permit. And so we found out <laughs> a few weeks later after spending quite a bit of money actually on legal fees to sort of start the whole process, we found out that the house that we thought we'd bought had been sold to somebody else. So it was a huge sort of roller coaster ride where we kind of, we were at this point where we didn't know if it was ours, what was going on. There were so many, like the, the communication was really sort of poor between sort of the agent and our lawyer and the sellers. And it was just an absolute roller coaster of emotions. And this was, you know, this is such a big decision for us. We were moving all of our family to a different country, you know, starting a new life. Like, and then to have this happen was just yeah and it just made me feel like okay well um (laughs) this house obviously isn't meant to be but again I found that kind of looking back now again I was very much trying to control the situation here I think sometimes when you want something so much you almost self-sabotage because you try and force things to happen you try and manipulate you know, the outcome, because you're like, oh, I really, really want this to happen. And I really want this to happen now. I think I was so ready. I think, you know, financially, we were ready to kind of take the leap. And I was like, right, our family's ready. And I just wanted everything to happen now that I control things too much. And this is a lesson for you. When you step into that energy of trying to force things, it's never going to work in your favor. You've got to trust the fact and allow the universe to take the lead a little bit and guide you. And I didn't do this. I I look back now and I completely see that, you know, this kind of led to this chain of events. Um, The next phase was that we booked to go back out again the end of the summer. So the busiest time to ever go traveling, um, you know, travel had pretty much sort of resumed by this point after COVID. So it was pretty busy (laughs) and it was absolutely sweltering hot. Um, the thing with Mallorca is it's very, very humid. So when it gets hot, it's you really, really feel it. <laughs> and again, you know, we've got two young children. We're living out of hotels. Um, you know, we we had like a nanny to help us out. But, uh, you know, being in a sort of a different environment, it just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it just was kind of, it was it was a bit of a rough ride. Both of them, both of the children, in fact, all of us ended up getting really, really sick. (laughs) We got some sort of stomach bug and Atticus was sort of the first one to, oh no, Rafi, sorry, was the first one to sort of get ill. Then slowly we all started to get this same stomach bug. So 
um, I got ill, Atticus got ill. Um, our family were coming out to spend a week with us. We decided to treat our families to come and we rented this beautiful finca in the middle of this vineyard. And it was supposed to be at the end of the trip because our thinking was, well, by the end of the trip, we will have found a property. Um, and so kind of preempting that, we thought as a way to celebrate you know, purchasing our new home, finding a new property, we'll bring all of our family out to stay in this beautiful thinker with us. Um, everybody got sick. <laughs> it was still a lovely week, but yeah, everyone got sick. And um, <laughs> yeah, one good thing actually that, that came out of that the last week was that I got engaged. So my partner took me for a few days and we, um, well, not, not even a few days, just for one night, we spent a night in a beautiful hotel in Parma, um, sort of the main city in Mallorca. We went paddle boarding and we had a beautiful meal and it was just, it was beautiful. That, so that part of the trip was really, really nice. But The rest of the whole trip, to be honest, just wasn't so smooth. And we went from, we we saw so many houses again and none of them just felt right. In fact, some of the houses we saw were just laughable. (laughs) Well, you know, the price that they wanted and just, yeah, the state of the houses and what they were in. And so we actually changed tact and thought, okay, we're actually going to, instead, we're going to look at buying a plot of land and we're going to build a house. So we found this plot of land and we had all of the architect drawings for the house that had been designed and it had all been approved. So we started the process again. We're like, right, this is happening. Now, fast forward a few weeks, I'm sure you can guess what's happened. Um, We find out that the seller has decided that because there's been quite a lot of interest in this plot of land, he now wants more money. Despite having our offer accepted, he said, you know, you're going to have to go up a couple of hundred thousand pounds or euros rather, um, if you want this house. We were already pretty much at the top of our budget because we knew that building a house, what they tell you the estimated costs are, we knew you can pretty much say it's going to be double. So we knew that we were kind of already at the limits. But It was funny because both of us, when we found out that they wanted more money, we both said instantly, no, we're pulling out then. If that's the case, if they're going to try and, um, you know, bid us off against each other, against other potential buyers, when our offer had already been accepted, we're not willing to get into that. So we are going to pull out. So we kind of took the lead on that and pulled out. And what was really interesting is that neither of us were upset. (laughs) In fact, literally a few days later, we both looked at each other and said, that is a relief. Like, can you imagine like buying a plot of land and not even having a home and having to then go through that process of building from scratch with small children in a country that you don't know and we'd have to rent somewhere in the meantime and oh my goodness, like what were we getting ourselves into? But again, it's because we were just trying to force things. We were not seeing anything there that we liked. So we were just jumping on something um, and trying to just kind of rush the whole process without actually sitting down and thinking like, is this the right decision? Is this truly what we want? And again, like when you try and force things and control and manipulate the outcome, Often you do so and it is not in your highest interests. And this is where, you know, you have to let the universe take charge and where you should allow for things to be easy. Everything about our trips to Mallorca were difficult, were strained. Everything that could go wrong, that could possibly go wrong, did. You know, we got sick. We, you know, it was just a really, really challenging time with the children. And, you know, all of the things that happened with the houses going through, you know, everything that went possibly could go wrong, went wrong. And we took a step back and I said to my partner, I was like, look, like maybe this is a sign from the universe that this obviously just isn't meant to be. Now, in contrast, purchasing this house in Mabea was just a completely different story. And we were just very, very relaxed about the whole process. We didn't try and control or force anything. My partner suggested we come and look in this sort of area. His dad actually lives the other side of Malaga, so probably be about an hour and a half from where we are based. So he kind of said, well, we've spent quite a bit of time in sort of the the southern region of Spain. Why don't we just go out, we book a trip, 
we go and see a few houses, just get a feel for it. Just if we like the area, no sort of pressure to commit to buying a house or anything, just go and spend two weeks there. So in October of last year, we did just that. We stayed in this really nice hotel and we were just really relaxed about the whole thing. And it was funny, like when you are relaxed in that energy, like everything around you, you know, your energy, remember, has that ripple effect. Like we were more relaxed, the children were more more relaxed, everything went so smoothly. Um, Just, yeah, it was just a really fun, easy trip. And we had a um, sort of a, uh, somebody that we knew out here that was a lawyer who put us in contact with an agent. And we said, look, we're thinking about maybe, you know, buying a property out here. Um, And he put us in contact with this agent. And he said, well, look, he will organize some viewings for you. Now, with Mallorca, I'd spent probably like, oh God, an an unhealthy amount of time on the internet looking for the houses that were available. With Marbella, I didn't do any of that. I didn't really look online at all. I just kind of handed over control to this agent and just said, okay, well, he's going to show us some places. He knows what's on the market and just kind of leave it up to him. And so I didn't really try and control or manipulate or force anything. And anyway, (laughs) he took us, he picked us up and we, we met him and we went to go and look at this first house. And the first house, we walked into it and we straight away we were like, this is incredible. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, it had all of sort of the features that we were looking for in a house. So sort of the traditional beams on the ceiling, the big grand fireplace, um, you know, the big terraces looking out to the sea, which was something that we always kind of said, like that was one of the things we wanted. We wanted to be able to see the sea, um, you know, a beautiful, huge pool beautiful garden filled with all of these amazing flowers and we're like this is this is absolutely gorgeous like it's perfect (laughs) um needs renovating which was something we wanted as well we didn't want something that had just recently been ripped out and renovated because we knew it was likely to not be to our taste so we wanted something that needed the work to be done ourselves we're like this ticks a lot of boxes (laughs) But I was like, well, it's the first house we've seen. Surely, (laughs) surely that, you know, we need to see more. So we did. We spent the next few days very sort of leisurely going to see more houses. It was all very relaxed. Um, It was just a really just fun experience. We had a great time. Like, you know, we, uh, yeah, we just really enjoyed the whole experience of, of house viewing compared to Mallorca, which just felt so stressed and so rushed and so forced. And we saw a few more houses and we're like, no, you know what, actually, that first house we really, really like. Now, this is where the really exciting story comes in. So I have um, a psychic that I often will connect with. Um, And I actually found him through a a psychic app. Um, And I thought, I'm just going to ask this psychic, I'm going to ask him for just a little bit of sort of guidance here. Now, psychics are people that I often use to help me get signs from the universe. And you can get signs from the universe in lots of different ways. You could ask the universe to just give you a specific sign, like, is this the right path? If I, if it is, then show me this specific thing, you know, show me a pink flamingo or show me, you know, a blue butterfly. Or, you know, you can pull a card for get to get guidance, you know, pull a um, an oracle card. So this psychic actually did pull a card. So he uses tarot and he pulled a card. And on this card, it was, there was a few things that he pointed out that he said, he said, these are the things you want to be looking out for. So first of all, the card was covered in flowers. And he said, well, you know, next thing, next time you go and look at the house, because I said to him, look, I want some guidance as to whether or not this house is the right one for me. You know, so I was asking for the support from the universe rather than just, you know, just going all guns are blazing and just saying, right, this is the house. I wanted to have that support from the universe. Let the universe give me a sign. And he said, like, look, these are the things to look out for. Flowers. The first thing I thought was, well, everyone, every house has flowers. I knew that the house had flowers. I'd seen the beautiful garden. So I was like, well, yeah, there are flowers there, but this is Spain. <laughs> a lot of these, you know, these big homes, they're going to have beautiful gardens. So I kind of wasn't really too sort of excited by that, that little um, nudge. 
The other two things, though, were quite sort of unusual. One of them was a star. So it was a, a an eight-pointed star, and there was a few of them on this card. And he said, oh, well, you know, this is sort of the shape. Maybe you'll see it somewhere in the house. That's another thing to look out for. But the other thing was a, it was a coat of arms. So it was like a... Um, kind of like what a knight would have. So a coat of arms um, with a cross on it. And he said that again is something to look out for, you know, that the badge, the coat of arms with the cross on it. See if you can see these things in the house. So we get to the house to do our second, this is going to be our second viewing. And we get into the house and I notice that the house has a name and it's called Las Floralias. I hope I've said that right, <laughs> which is basically Spanish for the flowers. So I'd been told to look out for flowers. Flowers is a sign and the house is actually called the flowers. <laughs> so I started to get a little bit excited. Anyway, we go into the front door and I thought, I really, really want to feel the energy of this house and just make sure like this is the one. And I walked slowly through the front door and then I looked up and I could see, so it's sort of got a gallery staircase. I could see hanging from it, a coat of arms. The coat of arms had a cross on it. So the original, that the seller was from Switzerland. Um, she was a Swiss owner. And so it had the Swiss flag on it. So the Swiss flag has the cross on it. And I got goosebumps and I was like nudging Philip. I was like, look, look, look at me. He's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> and I was like, you know, so excited that I was just randomly laughing. I was like, this is just bizarre. It was just, honestly, it was just one of those like magical moments. Like I was like, this is just so bizarre. But yeah, I just couldn't believe it. Anyway, we were looking around the house and we looked around all of it. And by this point, I was like, well, I've already seen my sign. I've seen the flowers. I've seen the coat of arms. Like, this is it. This is the house. I felt really, really good about the house. I was like, this is it. And as we were leaving, I was like, oh, there's a beautiful fountain in the driveway. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> it's a star shape. It's an eight point star. <laughs> um, and that was just like, the cherry on the cake. So it was all of the things that I'd been shown on this tarot card, quite unusual things, bar the flowers maybe, but you know, a coat of arms, an eight point star, like they're not things that you see every day. And I was like, these are signs. The universe is selling me, t- sending me a sign that this is it. And what was really interesting was that I just trusted there and then that everything was going to go through smoothly. I didn't have any doubt in my mind that what had happened previously, you know, with our houses was going to happen again. I just knew that this house was already ours. And it was a really, really smooth process. We visited Marbella in the October. We put the offer in. It got accepted. Um, We put in an offer that was a little bit lower um, and, you know, so we got a little bit of a discount of what the, the price was as well, got accepted and it all went really, really smoothly. And by January, we had the keys and we were moving in a really, really quick and easy, smooth process. We had this amazing lawyer who literally did everything for us and just sorted out everything and just, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, uh, really, really helped the whole process. Everything was just easy. And that is the thing, like when things are meant to be, they will, I, again, not to say they won't come with challenges, but they will be easy. They'll just flow and it will just feel like this is the way things are meant to go. But you have to allow things to be easy by allowing that guidance and those signs from the universe. Okay, allow the universe to sort of support you in that process. Don't try and force and manipulate things. Surrender a little bit. Allow yourself to let go rather than trying to cling on to something that perhaps isn't meant for you. Okay, so (laughs) I hope that has, you know, given you a little bit of inspiration about what potentially could be possible for you. You know, going through this whole process of manifesting my dream home, you know, any of you can do it. Any of you can do it. And it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's been six years since I first started that, that little glimmer of, you know, oh, it would be really nice one day to live somewhere warm where I can see the sea. To now that being my reality, it's a six-year process. But not once did I lose sight of that vision, okay? It's, you know, showing up each day for yourself and for your dreams and staying committed 
to the work that needs to be done to get you there. Because remember that, that responsibility for your beliefs, your energy, your vision, that is yours and yours alone. But then allowing the universe to be a part of that journey as well. Allowing the universe to guide you, allowing the universe to nudge you if you're trying to force things the wrong way in the wrong direction. Okay? So yeah, if you've got any questions though about this, um, yeah, let me know. Danny underscore Watson underscore coaching. I am, I've had a lot of people say, can you do a video? Can you do a guided tour? Which I absolutely will do. Um, One of my things for this year is to get back into YouTube and start doing YouTube videos more regularly. I love doing YouTube videos, but last year was just so chaotic in my life. It just didn't really happen. But now I'm here, I want to get into that more. And I do want to do a guided tour of the house so you guys can see it. Um, we've got crap everywhere at the moment. It's all a bit chaos. So I'm going to give it a while. I'll get myself a little bit sorted. And then I will promise I will do that for you. But yeah, if you've got any questions about that, let me know. Next week, I'm going to start coming back to some of your questions again. So definitely keep them coming. Again, my Instagram is Danny underscore Watson underscore coaching. Just come and say hello. Um, And yes, I hope you enjoyed these last two episodes. Have a great, great week, ladies. And I will speak with you again soon. Wanting to build your own successful online coaching business, make sure to check out Freedom, Abundance, and Impact, our free 10 day business and mindset course for coaches and aspiring coaches. To access, simply head to wearetheclick.com and click free course in the menu.